Hey, what's up? And welcome back to another episode of the Relationship Schools podcast. I'm your host, Jason Gaddis, coming at you from Boulder, Colorado, formerly a native of Utah, or that's where I hail from, and a uh, husband, dad, podcaster, relationship geek, and freak. Glad to be in the house today, and I'm glad you're here. Thanks for all your amazing reviews on iTunes. I'm really appreciating those rolling in. Uh, it's been fun to um, read those and see what you have to say. So, uh, thanks a lot. We are approaching the 500 review mark. I would love it if you could help me get to 500 five-star reviews. Um, for example, serendipity says for anyone looking to learn about relationships and grow, this podcast is an incredible resource. Boom. Short and simple five stars. Thank you. Serendipity. Awesome. Uh, thanks everybody for leaving your five-star reviews, positive reviews, and getting something out of this. And more importantly, thanks for sharing it with a friend and actually doing the work. Okay. That's what I really care about is that you roll up your sleeves and grow like a weed in relationship. Okay. Cause it will confront the hell out of you. I think if you're paying attention and you've been in a long-term relationship, you know that to be true. So we, we help with that right here on this podcast. So to leave a review, again, just go to iTunes and scroll up on your phone with your thumb. You can just click five stars or you can type in something like these folks have. Thanks. All right. Um, also, make sure you join our free, fast-growing, large Facebook group. Go into your Facebook search bar and just type in monogamy, smart couple, and you'll find us. There's a couple questions that you... Uh, um, need to answer. I'm going to be creating a slightly more advanced group soon um, because some of us are still in the position of blame. And uh, I want to see if there's some of you who want to join a group, kind of a no blame group, all right, where we just look at our own stuff and we, and we grow and take responsibility. Okay. So we've got um, that group, which is an awesome free resource for you. We have coaches in there monitoring I, I hop in there once in a while. I do a Facebook Live in there frequently. So come play with us, okay? All right. Okay, in this episode, I've got Jay and Tammy Daughtry. Um, this is a married couple, both of them, their second marriage. This podcast is about blended families and co-parenting. Mostly we're talking about co-parenting here. We may do another one around blended families, but... This is an example, a uh, living here, living example of a blended family. Um, Jay's wife passed away many years ago. He remarried Tammy. Um, Tammy's marriage ended years ago, remarried Jay. Uh, they blended their kids together. And it's just cool to hear their story and how to blend families well. How do, how do you co-parent and how do you bring the families together in the first place? Um, these two are therapists, counselors, um, in Nashville. And, uh, you know, they're just a cool, sweet couple. I met them at Narme when I went to speak there. Okay. We talked about how do you date? Um, and how do you tell your kids you're dating and how do you know when to bring your new boyfriend or girlfriend to your kids? Um, we also talked about how to work with a resistant co-parent. If your co-parent is being a big pain in the ass, how do you deal? How do you help? What do you do? Um, and they are certainly cool because they talk about being the stable parent and taking the higher road. Um, it's just cool. They ask some important questions. It's a short kind of rapid fire, uh, session here, but I think you're going to get a lot out of this, especially for you folks in the co-parenting conversation. This is particularly for you, but all of us can learn from this one. Okay. All right, stay tuned to the end for your action step and make sure you um, check out these guys. I'll leave their contact info. It's in the show notes and um, at the end of the episode. Okay, here we go. Okay, welcome to the show, Jay and Tammy. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, so we met at NARME and I was I, I went to your talk uh, that you guys gave. NAR NARME is the National Association for Marriage... Uh, and relationship and, education and relationship education. Thank you. It was my first time and it was really fun to meet you guys there and see you guys talking about co-parenting um, because yeah. you've navigated, you have a blended family. And I just 
really loved your talk and I thought, gosh, this would be cool because we have a lot of parents and certainly co-parents that listen to this podcast and, and I thought it'd be great to have you guys on. So welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah, we just do a brief intro to you to you two, like how long you've been together, where do you live, ki- and the kids, the kind of the situation with your like personal life there. All right. Well, we're in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, here in Music City, we uh, have a little counseling center called the Center for Modern Family Dynamics. But uh, we're a blended family. We're coming up on our 10th anniversary, actually, this month. Congrats. Nice. And uh, so I was a single dad with three kids, had lost my uh, previous spouse in a car accident. And so I kind of walked out that single parent journey for about three and a half years before meeting this beautiful lady and tell them where you were coming from. Oh, well, I grew up in Denver, Colorado and uh, Bronco fan. I, I don't know about you, but you're in Colorado, I know. So maybe yep. a Bronco fan. Okay. Um, had been a single mom for about <laughs> seven and a half years. Mm-hmm. I was married previously uh, at the time, uh, Angelia was almost nine. And so um, we blended four kids 10 years mm-hmm. ago. And in step family math, you take the number of kids times the number of years you've been married. So on the 28th, right. we are coming up on our 40th because you get more credit that way. Yeah, 40 <laughs> years credit. We'll take it. When, we deserve when, it. When okay. you blend four kids, um, it's a lot of instant chaos and lots of fun too. But um, so yeah, we'll yeah. And since a- then, we've added two son in loves, yes, and wow. three grandkids. Wow, yes. So, so this yeah. is Pops, and I'm Grammy Tammy on top of all that. So mm-hmm. life is full and wonderful. And um, yeah, he grew up in the Chicago, Illinois, yeah, area, northern from Illinois from Colorado. Oh, but, um, anyway, so we are, um, yeah, we run a family counseling center, and then uh, actually, before I met Jay, I had started co parenting international, which um, about 2003. 304 started doing events for divorced parents who were co-parenting between mom and dad's house, trying to help mm-hmm. have tools to navigate that complexity. Um, mm-hmm. And that really started when I was becoming a single parent back in 2000, trying right. to figure out how to communicate well with Angelia's father and not put her in the middle, um, try to figure out how to be good co-parents. So that's kind of been the heartbeat of my work for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And then we do this now all together, uh, travel and speak and train all over the country. Yeah. And so my, well, Angelia is the youngest of the four, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, so they've, you and John have, what, co-parented her for, she's going to be 20 in December, so about 17, almost 18 years yeah, 18 of her years. 19. That's 18. so cool. Yeah. So. Okay, so I have lots of questions about how, why, why it's successful for you guys and, and how you help people. Um, I think one of my first questions is, um, how does, how do two, how does a couple know when to blend the families? Like when do we kind of tell the kids and when do we start merging and, and moving in together? Or like, like this seems like a very big deal for some people. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it really is. Um, because it's not just you, you know, right? right? I mean, if there are kids involved, there's always this extra complexity, the dynamics for how are they going to experience this process? And I think one of the one of the very important things that we always talk to single parents about is recognizing how their dating life impacts their kids, Mm -hmm. because you're still a family. This is a family unit. May only have one parent right now, but it's still a family unit. And all those kids that are involved in that family unit, you know, have lots of ways they feel about where they're at in life. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and their connection with that bio parent, whether it's mom and dad who are not in the picture right now, um, or that they're meeting every other weekend or maybe week on week off, um, that is really, really important to them. And so the idea of dating, just the idea of dating sometimes can bring some stuff up, Oh yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, definitely. And so, um, you know, I think time is a fact. Right. Um, we've had folks come in our office who, you know, have been divorced or lost a spouse and it's only been five to six months and they're in a serious relationship talking about engagement. Right. Well, man, you got to slow that down, not only for yourself, but definitely for your kids. Yeah. You know, so time is an important thing. Making sure that you slow things down enough to figure out who I am and where I'm at in this and what is my experience been. 
right? And how is it affecting me? Because I have to be a stable person to be a stable parent. Mm. And I got to get there first before I even start thinking about bringing another person in and, and developing another intimate relationship. Um, I've got to be really sure that I'm stable and my kids are stable. Uh, and that takes some time with a, with a therapist, with good friends, with good support groups who've, who've had similar journeys. You know, it's always great to find someone who's three or four or five steps ahead of you in the journey. Sure. Yeah, you know? like a mentor, yeah. Because you've been there, you trust it because you know they're experiencing. It's not just sympathy, it's empathy. You know, yeah. they've walked it, they've felt it, they've, they've expressed it in ways that resonate with you. And so you feel comfortable in saying, hey, um, here's why I'm at and this is what I'm thinking, you know. What, what do you think? You know, you got someone to bounce things off of. That's really important to get feedback from from other people walking that journey. Yeah, so then, time I think is the first factor that you want to consider. You know, how long has it been since whatever that break was? And how you know? how did you guys deal with um, telling your kids? Um, how did that happen? Yeah, well, how do you recommend that? I would say one of the things um, before you start to introduce your children to a new partner. Um, we always try to encourage co-parents to inform the other co-parent, um, not because you're asking for their feedback or their permission to date. Right. That's not their role and it's not their business to, um, you know, give you feedback. But before you introduce your kids to an, a new partner, it's important to let the, the co-parent know, because if you imagine maybe six year old Johnny, you know, he's, he's going to spend the week with mom this week and, um, and she introduces him, let's say to her new boyfriend. Well, so then Johnny goes back to dad's house. He has no idea that he just, you know, that Johnny just met the new boyfriend and Johnny's kind of excited. He's like, Oh, guess what, dad? I met mommy's new boyfriend. And that could really be a sore spot for dad because maybe dad's still hurting from the divorce and the mm -hmm. divide of their original family. And, and instead of, you know, that being a um, exciting moment for Johnny to tell dad, um, then it, it hits a sore spot for dad. And he's like, what, what the leap? Your dad, yeah. she has a boyfriend and you met him. And then little Johnny, right? A moment that's exciting to share with dad becomes a trigger of pain and an explosive emotional mm -hmm. moment, which is really hard for Johnny. And then Johnny feels like, A, Johnny did something wrong. Maybe mommy's in trouble. Yep. And it, it creates a, a really tough thing for the child. So um, I always recommend before you introduce your children to a new dating partner, at least just inform, whether it's by a text or an email, let your other partner, you know, your co-parent know, hey, Kids are going to meet so and so. We've been dating, you know. Just want to let you know that they are going to meet that person, so that at least they've been informed. They have a little time to know, so that when Johnny comes to say to Dad, "Hey, I met you know Mommy's new boyfriend," at least it's not the first time they're hearing that. Yeah. Or vice versa. So um, I love that. It's yeah. Not the, um, again, it's not because they get to say you can't. Right. <laughs> they don't get to give <laughs> feedback <laughs> or approval. <laughs> and the other thing to remember, you know, and again, this is getting maybe on a rabbit trail, but it's an important thing to think about um, in the co-parent perspective because it always goes back to how these things do impact children. When the relation, the original relationship ends, that um, those children come from, usually there's a, um, one party that left and one that got left. Mm -hmm. Right. The relationship ends, and maybe. You know, maybe there was a lot of heartbreak over the years within the marriage or the relationship, but ultimately somebody left and somebody got left. Well, the person that left was usually ready to co-parent. They may have compartmentalized their emotion. They're ready to think about um, the other person like a, a business partner in mm -hmm. parenting. Well, the one that got left, it's probably going to take them a while to be more objective and compartmentalize their experience. And so they're going to be hurting and it's going to be probably covered up with a lot of anger, a lot of resistance and a lot of frustration. And so really thinking about, again, the one that's left, they're probably going to sometimes start dating first. Maybe it's a year later, two years. Um, remembering again, how does this all come back to their shared children? Again, being intentional, thinking about all of it. How does yeah. this affect their kids? You want to be sure to think, okay, it's not going to make my co-parent happy that I'm dating. I realize it's probably going to even piss them off mm -hmm. or other words, but because our kids are in the middle, I don't want it to hurt our children. I am going to take that step of maturity, inform my co-parent that yes, they're going to, you know, I am going to meet, introduce our kids to this person I'm dating. 
Um, I recognize this is, you know, probably hard to hear, but I do want you to know ahead of time so it's not a surprise to you. Because when it goes back to how is this experience going to impact kids, we don't want them to be the emotional, create the emotional landmine, especially yeah. when if the one yeah. that left is right. dating, the one that got left is hurting. You might be two, three years down the road and and that other one is still really angry. Yeah, so, totally. So this stuff can ripple forward. So, right. um, so I would say, you know, getting around to answering your question, yes, I haven't forgotten. You've asked how that. you talk to the kids, uh-huh. but we always, and, and this is part of that process of healthy co-parenting is to back it up one more step and say, okay, I share kids with another parent. This will impact them, but it's also going to impact that parent because we're a family here. We're all, they're also a family there, you know, so in protecting the kids from getting caught in that emotional crossfire possibly, then we start with that co-parent. Yeah. But then, yeah, there's this legitimate question of, well, how do we talk to this with our, you know, talk to our children about this? And I think it's really important to recognize that open communication is always the best policy, right? Yeah. That we don't go too fast. And so even if it's just, hey, I'm going out for coffee or dinner with somebody. Well, most likely you're going to do that when the kids are another house or you're going to have somebody watch the kids while you do that, whatever it is. Um, And so when that opportunity is there, you just say, hey, I'm going to go out to dinner with this friend or or I'm going to go meet them or we're going to go see a movie or something like that. And you talk about it as a friend because, quite frankly, it's early on in the process. Yeah, sure. And I think part of one of the dangers to avoid is that you're almost like dating in secret until it gets to be something that's important to you. And then you spring it on the kids, right? Well, you've had all this time to adjust and, and get to know this person and so on. And the kids all of a sudden are like, you like this person? What do you mean you like this person? We don't even know who this person is. Yeah. You haven't even heard their name maybe, you yeah. know? So sometimes they keep too much back. Right. Okay. But only say what you need to say. Oh, Hey, I've got this friend, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm going to go see this friend again. And maybe you've dated three or four times and you're just honest about it. And you say, and we kind of like each other. So I think we're going to do some of this more often. Now, at this point, you haven't induced them to the kids yet because yeah. you're still getting to know. Yeah. But all along the way, you're letting them know you're bringing them on the journey to the extent that they can understand. Yeah. Right? And you've, you've been in that process doing some healthy co-parenting where you've let this other co-parent know, hey, I'm actually meeting with somebody and, you know, our our relationship is developing. I'm not yet going to do this, but at some point we might actually do a family thing Mm -hmm. and introduce them to the kids. Yeah. I just want to let you know that. Just a heads up. Right. Right. So consider, that's why I love you guys' approach is it's so kind and respectful and considerate, right? Well, and, and people, again, when you think about who left and who got left, the one who got left is there's never going to be a win for them, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And it's going to feel um, very adversarial and they're going to feel that. And unfortunately, sometimes they may take um, the initiative to tell the kids too much. They may tell the kids, well, you know, you're, we'll, we'll pick on moms for a minute. You know, it might be a dad who's really hurting. The mom left, she ended the marriage and the dad may be, you know, well, you know, you, you know, it's your, your mother's fault that we're not even a family anymore. Right. She's the one who wanted the divorce. I didn't want the divorce. And so when these triggers come up, kids can end up being um, told way too much. And that, that isn't their burden to carry. Absolutely. So it's, it's important, you know, and, and then when some of those mixed messages come back to you as a parent, you know, kids may come back and say, well, gosh, you know, I, mom said this or dad said this. And, and when you start to see that um, happening, Um, it can be hard to circle back with your co-parent patiently because again, it triggers your own frustration. Well, why in the world would you tell Mm -hmm. the kids that, Yeah, you know, you told them I'm the one that filed for divorce, but did you tell them that you were um, addicted to porn or did you tell them you had an affair or it can become a tit for tat more, right? And it brings out all the worst of of why the relationship failed. And so, um, you know, the dating, you know, dating after, and a first family, when there are children involved, it can become layer upon layer of trigger. And it it can yeah. potentially bring out 
some real pain points for both sides. So, so. totally. So guys, when, when you have that kind of example, like it starts to become a fight and the other person, let's say I'm really considerate uh, of my co-parent and I say, Hey, just a heads up, I'm going on the date soon and I'm going to introduce them to the kids. And, um, and they're just hurt and shut down and blaming me. Uh, and that's how they want to play it. But I continue to show up trying to be the bigger person and just being considerate. And they eventually, you know, put up a wall and say, it's none of my business. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. When it's that contentious, what, how do you work with that situation? When the other person just won't play fair, basically. Well, and, and again, this goes back to the beginning of things. Um, really, even at the point before or in the process of getting divorced, trying to have a mindset even then of, yes, we're splitting up as parents. As partners. As partners, as parents, you know, maybe they've been married, maybe they've been never married, but we share children. And we share these children for the rest of our lives. So we need to try to preserve this parental relationship or this parental role somehow in this process. And so from the very beginning, trying to set that tone is important, mm -hmm. but a lot of times that doesn't happen. The all American divorce is contentious and adversarial. And unfortunately a lot gets just destroyed in the process of having that divorce. Um, but almost always, um, no matter what we disagree on as, as parents, yeah who have separated and divided. But one thing we do agree on is that we love our kids and we want the best for them. Mm -hmm. And so finding ways to reframe yeah. the experience, so to speak, and put it in a new perspective where, where we're always coming around and talking about things from the perspective of, Hey, I found this new book that I think is really going to be helpful for our kids you know it's really going to be helpful for little Johnny and Susie and and uh, just wondering if you want to check it out you know it's or you know I heard these people and they were saying some crazy great things that I think would be terrific for our children wow um, you know if you want to check them out there's this website you know blah 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 but when you when you have a, a co-parent who's shutting down and is getting angry like that um, the best way in is the back door of their heart for the kids yeah yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. That's the thing they love. That's the thing, the thing they, they value want. most. That's yeah. The thing they're committed to is I want my kids to be whole and healthy. I want them to thrive. I don't want them to be hurting and, and helping them understand that, you know, Hey, there's ways we can protect the heart of our children. That may be the first and only way you break mm -hmm. that barrier down or start to chip away at it is just getting the understanding of, wow, how do we protect the heart of our kids? Yeah. yeah, I think I found some things that might be helpful. Hey, quick interruption here from me, yours truly, to remind you that our nine-month training is enrolling right now, and it's called Deeper, D-P-I-R, this deep psychology of intimate relationships. If you really want to change your life, guys, this is the training to do it in. It's the only course I'm aware of that's this long and this deep and this intense on intimate relationships, how they work and how to do them well. You should hear what people have to say. Check out what Danielle had to say here. When I first started, I felt really unsure and kind of on rocky ground in terms of relationship and where I was going and what my life was all about. And what I've learned in the program is that I have needs and I can actually speak them. And when I do that, I'm way more clear. I'm easier to be around because I know what I want and need. I've also realized that I have had issue with boundaries and now that I'm more clear on my needs, boundaries are more clear as well. So that's been a gigantic piece for me. You know, life is relationship, right? And so knowing where you stand and then how to relate that to other people could change a person's life completely. It has changed mine. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? All right. And if you want to also transform your needs, yes, you have them. Take better care of yourself through boundaries that are effective and own your desire more. Come hang out with us. Relationshipschool.com forward slash DPIR. 
Okay, Danielle had a big transformation, so can you. We interview everyone that comes into our trainings and we wanna make sure you're a good fit. Please apply, uh, make this the most awesome relational year of your life where you finally grow up, you know, relationally. All right, back to the podcast. And to always yeah. affirm in the other person that, you know, um, you know, if it's the mom who's trying to stay open and the dad is shut down, you know, for the mom to continue to, to say, you know, I'm always going to honor and respect you. You're the father, you know, you're always going to be their dad. Nobody's ever going to replace you as their dad. You know, if it's, it's, if it's mom that's shutting down and dad can, t- can continue to verbalize to her, you know, you're always going to be their mom. You, I will always respect and honor you as your mother, no matter who I date, no matter who I ever, re- you know, if I ever get remarried, you are always going to have the first spot in their life as their mother. Um, you know, to actually verbalize those, whether it's a phone call, it's a written mm-hmm. email, um, you know, because sometimes those, those first, um, the, the first role, right, in the male-female parental spot, um, I mean, that's significant. And I think sometimes when we start, when either parent starts to date, that's in a sense what gets threatened yeah. or um, the insecurities about um, who we are in, the, in our children's lives might get threatened. And so if, if one is shutting down and pulling away, the one that's trying to keep the bridge um, open, uh-huh. <laughs> um, you know, just keep, keep verbalizing and keep honoring that um, that person is, is important to you because you, you know, that you're the mother, you're the father, you know, to say that, to express it, you know, on, on Mother's Day, Father's Day, on birthdays for that other parent to help the children, um, you know, take action to, to have gifts, to do something kind, you know, to put action to those words. Yeah. And, and hopefully over a year or two as time goes by, you know, being consistent about that. Maybe, maybe some of that wall will come down, but you know, I've seen in in the work we've done and, you know, I do a lot of high conflict co-parent counseling here in Nashville and and we do a lot of coaching and work over uh, the internet with people as well. And, you know, we've seen a lot of powerful work happen over time where, where people who, I mean, have petitioned each other 42 times in court over five or six years we've seen them actually start communicating more effectively and, and getting on a parenting team instead of being at work. And we've also seen some that literally there's only, you know, somebody just walks out and decides I'm not going to communicate with the other party. I'm just done. And, yeah, you know, so I wish there was some magic you know, equation and, and fairy dust we could put in the bottle of water that we have, you know, with our clients to help them all get to the same outcome. But, um, but I would say, um, like Jay said, just keeping parents focused on the love they have for their kids, the the importance that they're, you know, both mom and dad are always going to be the favorite of the children. They're important. Uh, and, and as much as they can see each other as, as an equal team um, and important to the children's uh, success in life. And this is a this is a lifelong journey. You know, yeah. parent doesn't end at 18. It just gets it gets more important after that. Um and it gets more stressful for the kids actually after that. And that's a whole nother show we should do Yeah, for about sure. how, to, how to co-parent well out when the kids are 18 and they have to decide where they spend Christmas. That's a, that's a whole nother show. Right. actually. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, Maybe we'll do so that. In how, uh, you know, how we told the kids, um, I, I honestly, you know, I, I actually reached out to my daughter's dad, John told him I was dating. Um, at some point they met, um, I can't remember actually how we went and how that all happened. Um, you know, he, he won my daughter's heart over when he cooked dinner for us once. It was actually funny cause I don't cook. And, uh, mm. the second time he made dinner for us, he's an amazing cook. She literally says in front of everybody, Oh mom, you got to marry this guy. <laughs> I do not want to grow up on turkey sandwiches and pickles my whole life, which is absolutely the truth. Yeah. We, <laughs> I don't cook. So, anyway, uh, he, he, he wowed her with, uh, with love and food, but, um, That's cool. so we, um, you know, we, we just spent time together as a family. He did this fun little, uh, uh, when he actually proposed to me, he did a family version of this with, with, uh, candy ring pops and all kinds of stuff involved the kids in it. And, uh, we actually made the wedding a family experience. And mm, so That's really sweet. Uh, anyway, so, you know, we, and, and, I actually, now this is, again, a whole other podcast, if you wanted to talk about another day, about building a blended family where there's been death on one side mm-hmm. and force on the other, because they have different um, different dynamics. Different dynamics. 
next. That and makes experiences sense. Experiences for the kids. Yeah. yeah, that makes and sense. And ten, ten years down the road, I could tell you there's a lot of things I know now that I didn't know the first couple of years, and I did a great job as a stepmom um, in some areas. And there's a lot of things I wish I would have known then that I know now. Yeah. Um, on step parenting, grieving children. So. Yeah. And it can get discouraging going back to that that other question um, because it's not unusual. We we have we have a lot of co-parents who come in and go, you know my child's other parent is just horrendous. Mm -hmm. I I can't do anything right. I I can't have a civil conversation. I try to text because, you know, we need to communicate about the kids stuff and they won't even communicate. They're not responding and so on and so forth. And, and it's just wearing me out. And and we try to encourage them. We try to let them know that even if that other parent is going to remain uncooperative, if you're willing to do the hard work, of co-parenting on your side, mm-hmm. right? Because even even if yeah. they're not involved, you applying those principles uh, that will guard the heart of your children. What that will also do is give them a chance to experience a healthy family, healthy relationship within the context of the family mm-hmm. that's not tainted with with old hurt and anger and frustration. And you don't want to say that out loud to them, but that's your motivation. That's your motivation to say, okay, I can't change what they're doing over there. I can't change their heart. I can't make them do this thing. But I know if I do what I can do, then it's going to really impact our children in a positive way. And so I'm going to keep doing this. And I'm going to keep showing up and I'm going to keep being respectful and I'm going to keep sending them the schedules on on this and that. And I'm going to make sure that I am connecting us as parents through our children, because that's the only connection we have left. And we have to do that. And over time, over time, people start to recognize, well, wait a minute. This all seems really healthy. And good. And maybe there's something to this. Mm-hmm. And maybe I should. Well, and the kids get a huge transmission about, you know, the one parent who's kind of holding the more respectful perspective. That's a big teaching for kids over many years, oh. right? It is. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. So we just have a couple of minutes. I just want to get any last, I guess, parenting tips. We'll, we'll definitely have to have you back. I'd love to explore some of these other topics um, mm-hmm. just because I got to go teach a class. So, uh, fi- just kind of some parting words for the co-parents that are listening. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot here, but it just kind of distilling it down. Anything else you guys would love to say? Well, for, um, what I tell co-parents all the time is kind of echoing what Jay said. You can't make the other person do the right thing or stop doing the wrong thing. I'm going to get emotional. Mm. But, um, you are writing a story that is your story. And when your kids look back on um, you being the mom or you being the dad, that's the story they're going to carry forward about you. Uh, and I have two parents that uh, raised me as co-parents. Um, and I'm 50 years old. And my parents have been apart since I was one. And I have a very clear um, story about one of them who stayed really angry and made every effort at every opportunity to make it hard on the other parent, to remind me of every mistake one parent made um, over and over and over. And the anger and the toxic lifestyle and the repetitive behavior of of being um, hateful and and being mean. I mean, it showed up and rippled throughout this one parent's life. And the other parent, I look back and I remember having wonderful experiences. I I remember having happy holidays. I remember having easy transitions. I remember um, joyful experiences, not a perfect parent by any means, but I remember um, a pretty normal life experience with that parent. And uh, to this day, both parents are still alive. And I see clearly the fruit of one parent um, 
getting to acceptance and continuing to love me and enjoy me. And one parent still angry. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I just say to any co-parent listening, um, though it may hurt and may, maybe some things might not even be fair. Choose to write a story that is defined by love and let your kids be free. Because when you stay angry, you put yourself in prison and it hurts your kid. Yeah. Well, we always tell our co-parents hmm. is take your child's age, add 20 years to it. And imagine sitting down with them and asking them, tell me about your life experience because your parents were invited. How did that affect you? What are they going to say? Yeah. See, that's the story you write now. That's the story you're writing right now. Mm -hmm. And it can be completely different. Yes. The experience with one parent can be that healthy thing. The experience with the other parent can be laden with pain and discord. And quite frankly, they're going to lean into the healthy parent. Yeah. Because someday they're an adult and all the stories that may or may not have been told will, will come to, to fruition. I mean, there's going to be reality that will be juxtaposed against all of this other experience. Mm -hmm. And that child as an adult is going to lean into that healthy parent. And that relationship is going to, to, bear fruit. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be, you know, significant. Yeah. All the effort is going to be significant. Totally. So, so write that story well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great message. Yeah. Uh, last question I ask every guest. Um, and I just ask that you keep it maybe to one or two sentences, yeah. which, <laughs> which is going to be difficult. Um, but if I spoke to a room of a thousand young people, teenagers, and I could only tell them one thing about relationships, mm. um, and let's say they came from blended families. Some of them came from co-parenting. Some of them came from divorced families and some of them were still together. Uh, what would you want me to tell those teenagers? Wow. Yeah, that is, that is a tough one. Um, you know, in relationships in general, it doesn't matter where you've come from, where you're, uh, but it matters where you're going and you can choose. Whatever that experience has been in the past. Yes, we, we are, we are, um, touched by that. We are changed by that. We are formed by that. And slow yourself down. Ask yourself, what did I like about my family experience, the relationships I've seen? And what did I not like about it? And I can choose mm -hmm. today what I want. And do that. Yeah. Do that. Nice. Choose for yourself a healthy relationship. Decide ahead of time what do I want and actually look for it. Yeah. And be discerning enough to say and brave enough to say when you're in a relationship and there's things there that aren't right to say, you know, it's better to be alone than to be with the wrong person. Mm -hmm. I need to work wait for great. That's what she always tells us. You gotta wait <laughs> cool. for great. Thanks, you gotta, you gotta value yourself enough to wait for great Yeah, and not to just settle into a relationship Cool, because you don't want to be alone. I have nine words. Okay. Hit oh, me, boy. Tammy. Go for yeah. it. <laughs> you are not your parents. You can be more. Mm. Beautiful. Nice. Thanks guys. Where do people find you? and the work you're doing in the world? Um, we have two websites. Well, we have three websites, actually. Um, Stick with co-parenting. Hang on. <laughs> Give me a second. The co-parentinginternational.com. So co-parentinginternational.com. And then um, the set uh, modernfamilydynamics.com, yeah. mm -hmm. which they're some the same, some different. And like I said, we do video coaching with people all around the world. Great. We'd love to do that. But then for this, any stepmom out there, we do have, I have a website called the stepmomconnection.com. And we have free monthly webinars that are a lot of fun on the 16th of every month. And you don't have to be live. You can uh, register for the link and you get it to watch anytime you want. So 
uh, the stepmomconnection.com is that third one. So okay. we'd love to connect with anybody who's interested. So thank you mm-hmm. so much for having us. And we'd love to do another one anytime you you want us. Okay. We'll have you back for sure. Thanks guys. Really, really helpful. Yeah. And thanks for modeling how to be really awesome co-parents. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Jay and Tammy. Make sure you go check out modernfamilydynamics.com, one of their three websites I believe they mentioned. Um, And you can email them jay at modernfamilydynamics.com and tammy at modernfamilydynamics.com. Okay, that's one of their three websites. Just go there and poke around. Uh, They got some cool resources, co-parenting works. They have a book. Um, Seems like they have a one heart, two homes uh, class or an online program, I believe. So check it out, all right, if you resonated with them. All right. Now, if you are in the co-parenting conversation, I think one of your action steps here is to take the high road. And what I mean by that is if you've got a challenging co-parent, um, you're going to continue to live in a way that doesn't throw your ex under the bus. You don't talk shit about them. You do that with your friends maybe, but not your kids. Okay. Um, you just hold them in high regard and you're going to walk that way forever, but try it for a week. Okay. One week and then pair up with someone in your community and let them know how that week long practice went between now and the next podcast. Just say, all right, I just decided to be the bigger person and I didn't throw my ex under the bus and I just modeled it with the kids. I spoke um, respectfully I listened and I just, you know, it was really different. And here's what I learned about myself. Okay. Play that for a week. And some of you are like, yeah, I do that all the time. And yeah, but, um, yeah, but if you're still, yeah, budding, it just means you have more work to do to get through your resentments and to clear your pain and to stand, you know, in a strong way so that your kids genuinely feel your genuine respect for the other person, even if they're being an asshole. Okay. Try that for a week. All right. And of course, make sure you apply to sign up for Deeper, the Deep Psychology of Intimate Relationships. We've had a lot of co-parents, parents, parents, uh, split parents, divorced parents go through our program and their lives are completely different, especially with their kids, okay? If you want a major upgrade in how you handle your ex and how you model to your children, come grow up here with us at the Relationship School. It's an outstanding experience and we do it right. Uh, you're going to get nine months of very intense feedback with a very loving community of people, okay? Um, so go to relationshipschool.com forward slash DPIR. If you want to apply, we interview everybody that um, gets into the program and we want to make sure it's a good fit. So you got to apply, right? Okay, thanks and stay tuned until next time. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Relationship School fans, and smart couple listeners. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel, all right? Do us a favor, subscribe, share one of these videos with a friend, all right? We want to help the planet get their act together around relationships, and you are one of them, so thank you.